Thank you very much, Mr. President. My question is for the Minister representing the Minister for Energy, Senator Canavan. <laughs> Can the minister advise the Senate what the government is doing to reduce power prices for Australian households and businesses and to ensure the reliable supply of electricity? The minister representing the Minister for Energy, Senator Canavan. Thank you, Mr President. And Mr President, uh, I thank Senator Hume for that question. I know how uh, seriously she takes this issue and how important she knows uh, lower power prices are for the Victorian economy, especially given their strong manufacturing industry in that, in that state. And Mr. President, that is why the government has taken action to reduce energy prices, because we want to protect jobs, particularly in our manufacturing sector. We want to help households lower their budgets and ensure they can balance those budgets every year. And we are already taking action to do that. Mr. President, we have, for the first time, uh, introduced regulations that allow the Australian government to restrict the exports of gas from Australia to ensure there is sufficient gas here domestically. That has, Mr President, in the last 18 months helped lower gas prices uh, by about 20 per cent in the spot market, and offers of gas to large businesses have fallen uh, from $20 a gigajoule and sometimes more uh, to less than $10 a gigajoule at the moment, so a 50 per cent reduction in offers of gas to large energy users, particularly those large manufacturers in Senator Hume's home state of Victoria. Mr. President, we've also ended the ability of large companies to challenge regulatory decisions under the so-called limited merits review process. Mr. President, that alone, that decision alone, has helped save consumers $6 billion by not allowing large companies to challenge regulatory decisions that have been properly made. Mr President, we realise, though, of course, there is more to do. There is a lot more to do, and that's why we have an extensive plan to lower power prices further. Mr President, we're doing three major things. We are ensuring that consumers get, uh, get, get the lowest possible offer they can by making sure default offers for the large companies come down, and the uh, energy ministers met with energy producers last week to do that. Mr. President, we are also introducing legislation this later this year that will ensure governments have a big stick to wield to, to make sure energy companies don't, don't dud consumers and provide strong competition in these markets. And finally, Mr. President, we are encouraging investment in new and reliable power generation because we understand, we know, greater supply of power will mean lower power prices for Australians. Senator Hume, a supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. President. Can the minister please explain why a focus on price is so important for Australian households and businesses? Senator Canavan. Well, thank you, Mr. President. Well, Mr. President, as I outlined, we understand that keeping a strong manufacturing industry in this country relies on us having competitive energy prices, and the thousands of jobs in that industry rely on affordable energy to survive. And, Mr. President, to demonstrate how important this issue to our economy is, you just have to look. At South Australia, where currently electricity prices in South Australia are some of the highest in the world, they are sitting at around 47.8 cents per kilowatt hour. They are more than they are paying. South Australians are paying more for electricity than Latvians at 25.6 cents per kilowatt hour. Estonians at 23.4 cents per kilowatt hour. Romanians at 21.2 cents per kilowatt hour, and Hungarians at 19.3 cents per kilowatt hour. Mr. President, that is not good enough, and that has to change. It's a result of renewable energy targets being forced on South Australian consumers. And now we have a Victorian government wanting to do the same in Victoria. They're saying that South Australia has done this to their economy. Let's have some of that too. That's exactly the approach of Daniel Andrews, and it's going to fail in Victoria just as it's failed in South Australia. Mr President, we need to get back to the job of providing reliable power to all Australians. Senator Hume, final supplementary question. Thank you very much, Mr President. Can the minister please explain why it's so important that the government keeps that focus and what are the risks associated with alternative approaches? Senator Canavan. Well, Mr. President, uh, uh, as I was outlining in that previous uh, answer, uh, the risk is that some states, other states, uh, continue to force feed uh, intermittent and unreliable power to their consumers that we, we know, we know from experience, uh, will push up prices. Mr. President, Mr. President, we also must ensure that we object and reject. Uh, this notion that we wouldn't, shouldn't develop our own resources to provide energy to Australian businesses and families. We are lucky to be blessed with significant renewable coal, gas uh, and other energy sources, and we should develop all of these to help lower power prices. Mr. President. I Mr. President, welcome the fact that over the weekend uh, in South Australia, uh, candidates Order. in local government elections Order. have been elected that support the development of the Great Australian Debate and support the development of oil and gas based in this country. Indeed, the anti -drilling, former anti-drilling mayor Peter Clemens has been defeated by a new mayor, Michael Pengelly, who supports the development of oil and gas uh, in Kangaroo Island. And that is why we need to develop Order. our resources for all consumers.